Hey everyone, Pixel Geek here once again with another semi finalist of the No Code Awards. Uh, you probably already know this No Code uh, community member. He has done some crazy things with Webflow interactions that boggle even the Webflow team's mind or even the CEO of Webflow. Uh, I first saw one of his projects when he created the PS4 UI all in Webflow, and I was like, this is nuts. But then he came back even stronger and created a whole video game inside of Webflow, Civilization 4 inside of Webflow. And it, it, it's just mind blowing. And so you've probably already heard of him, seen his links tweeted out all over the internets in the no code community. But here we go. This is Sarkis. Sarkis, how you doing? Good. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. I'm so glad and kind of expected that your project was going to make it to the semifinals. I mean, it is intense. And um, sometimes when I talk to you or see some of your videos, I see that intensity. I see that intensity in your brand, in your um, in your tweets and whatnot. And so uh, before we get into how you created the PS4, actually, no, the, the Civ 4 uh, video game inside of Webflow, let's, uh, let's learn more about your backstory. Like, how did you get into the no-code community? How did you find out about Webflow? Like, yeah, um, introduce yourself to everyone who hasn't heard of you yet. Cheers. So my name is Sarkis Minetian, or Sako for short. Um, I, my father introduced me to Photoshop when I was five, and he, he ruined my life. <laughs> so when I saw that empty canvas, I just fell in love with it. And I was like, okay, I, 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 I love the freedom that design gives me, um, especially as a creative myself. I always try to express my creativity in whatever platform or medium I can find. So whether that's writing or theater or music or I come from an artistic musical kind of background with my family. Oh, nice. Uh, my dad is a professional photographer. So I, 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 I've always been kind of um, exposed to all, all many forms of art. Um, and then I had to pick one and say, which, which is the one that you know, works for you? And for me, it was the one that gave me the most freedom. Um, and for me, design, uh, product design was the one that I loved. Uh, I loved the idea of just, I can, build, I can design anything and it's in front of me. The problem is you can't develop it. Yeah. So I can design anything, but then good luck, you know, convincing the developer or something that that's the right thing to create. Um, and I realized I went on a mission basically in the uh, late 2000s to find tools that can just give me that freedom, even if it was limited in their functionality, that's fine. But yeah. I still want to be able to work on it myself. And that led me eventually to Proto.io and led me to uh, many, you know, Macaw and so on and so forth. And then I got to Webflow and I was like, okay, this is... To many other people, it was just like early on, even it was just like a landing page, website builder and stuff. And I said, no, this is Photoshop for the web. Um, this is uh, the, even the, the inspiration for Webflow. You can see how the designers really built this for designers. Like, it, yeah. it, you know, developers, many developers use Webflow as well. But for me, as someone who religiously used Photoshop, when I saw this, I just saw the uh, how in sync it was with my overall design process that I always had. And at that point, you know, Early on in my career, I used I built my own prototype and I raised over a million dollars with it. I already knew how to use prototypes effectively, and I realized there's a whole other industry uh, for prototyping that people don't even, aren't even aware of. Yeah. Like startups today, they raise hundreds of thousands on millions of dollars to build MVPs and prototypes and so on when they could use Webflow and yeah. essentially you know bring their ideas to life and validate and create MVPs of it really really fast. Yeah. And I realized that people are still in landing page land. They're still in this idea that Webflow is just for websites and primitive kind of like e-commerce, whatever experiences. It's not. Yeah. Like if I can build something, if I can take an entire prototype of, a, you know, the PS4 game console, it's not even, it's not even something you traditionally see on a computer, let alone in a browser. And it's like yeah. someone can take that and just remake it pixel perfect to the point where Sony reaches out and says, hey, could you <laughs> maybe put up a disclaimer because we don't want to confuse our they users. They did that? <laughs> nice. like, is so I was like, that's, that's, I guess that's the mark of your success when, so, when they Once reach they out. Say, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice that they didn't say, uh, like, tell you to take it down. No, no, it, it was a problem. But, but, but that's they, awesome they, they, that they noticed. That. Yeah. I mean, uh, for them, I mean, for many of these companies, uh, it, it, it's another way of engaging with gamers. It's another way of spreading their marketing. Yeah. Uh, I was worried with Civilization VI um, that... Oh, with the six. Uh, Sorry, I kept on saying four. No, it's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, with Civilization VI, 
it is way ahead of the PS4. It's not just mimicking the PS4, it's actually mimicking almost every single feature in Civilization VI. So you have the thousand, you know, 12,400 you know, assets. It's like, there's just so much happening there, like elements there at, some, at one time that I was like, if there was a project that could ever like push Webflow over the bleeding edge, this is it. It doesn't get bigger than this. Um, because it literally stopped working at one point. My iPad, <laughs> oh my I have an iPad Pro fully maxed out and my iPad Pro was weeping in the corner. It was just like, can you please not do this to me again? Do we have to test it for the 15,000th time? Like, <laughs> like we get it, it looks good. <laughs> so so uh, basically, yeah, when I built that, I just, I just realized, okay, um, this, this is the project that can kind of finally end the debate of, you know, these are just website builders. It's like, yeah. okay, there, is, there are limitations for sure. And I think it's a, it's a mark of a great designer to know their limitations, yeah. that this is what you can and can't do with it. But to say that these are just, uh, this is only for showcase websites is absolute nonsense. And I think that Civilization VI finally punched a hole in that argument. And actually a surprise for you, Nelson, yeah. uh, Sid Meier's found out about the project. Um, yes. And, he actually, and his, the Firaxis team reached out to me which is my evil plan from the beginning. And they reached out and said, so Sid Meier, I saw your prototype. And I was like, okay, Sid Meier is about to pull out a shotgun and shoot me in the face. Like he's about to be pissed. And he's like, no, they were completely floored. They're like, we didn't even know this was freaking possible. Like what tools do you use? I'm like, Webflow, like Webflow, that's interesting. And I realized that's the point here. No code has to get out of its bubble. We need to yeah. finally get in front of the right people and bridge it with industries that are much, have been around much longer. No code is a very young industry compared to gaming or compared, yeah. compared to IP or software and so on. So now my goal with, uh, in being in the no-code space, you know, a lot of this is my, my passion. I love working on these projects is to basically take every tool in no-code and push them to their bleeding edge and kind of be an ambassador for no-code. And I think the best way I can do that is to, is to study these tools, understand their tools and figure out like, what is the best way I can express the power of these tools individually. Yeah. Webflow, I have one project left. Um, and that's going to be the complete rebuild of the Mac OS. And that's coming at, in December. Oh, um, right. Well, let, yeah, let's, then it's let's, like... <laughs> let's step back. Let's step back. Well, so, so, that's a huge story. But I feel like you've glossed over something that's very, very important that I always like to hear. Um, uh, is you went from Photoshop and then to Webflow. Well, I mean, in, in then Proto.io, then you found Lots Macaw. Of people, yeah. um, <laughs> and... You, then you found Webflow. I remember that Macaw and Webflow were were at the same were launching at the same time. So what was it about Webflow that sparked you and said, "This is the one. I'm going to go all in on on this one." What was that first the moment? The UI. What What about the UI? The UI mimicked Webflow, mimicked Photoshop very well. Um, it felt like a natural transition from Photoshop to Webflow. Um, Macaw and Proto.io and the others, you'll notice that they've really fallen behind. Like those tools just didn't know what they wanted to be. But in the case of Webflow, consistently, even with its limitations at the time, I saw how it's progressing very consistently. It's not trying to, you know, jump the gun. It's not trying to blow me away with 50 features or something. It's, it might have five features, but those five features are going to be very consistent and uh, you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and that's why for me, it's like there, you know, there could be many other tools out there that might even have more functionality and stuff. And I, I like exploring you know, new tools, but so far what I've noticed is, and there's a reason why Webflow is so prominent in the no-code space is because I think it's maybe one of the only brands in no-code, like a brand, not, not a cool tool, not like it's, it's fun and it's yeah. functional. I mean, as a complete package, yeah. it's, it's the only complete package that I know of. Yeah. And so that's the, for me, I say, I'm not loyal to a, to a fault, to any particular tool. If Webflow stops being competitive and stops pushing the boundaries, I'm eventually going to be using another tool, yeah. you know, but from what I'm seeing, it's like, they're doing a good job consistently of showing me the, the, you know, the roadmap where they're trying to go. Yeah. And for me, honestly, if Webflow could not handle civilization six, I might've quit Webflow oh. because I was like, I really need this to, to work. So you um, and did. It did. So you did uh, during the path of that uh, while you were being, you did uh, tweet at me or DM me saying like, "Hey, uh, there's some things, there's some bugs or something." Yeah. And yeah, making a site with over twelve hundred <laughs> or not, yeah, a whole twelve thousand assets, like 
Um, <laughs> whoa. So um, it might slow down the site. <laughs> what? Tell me, what hurdles did you have to get over to actually push this to the finish line? You must have like a crazy CPU, like uh, 10, uh, 10 petabytes of RAM. Um, <laughs> you must have actually. That actually, no. I I have a I have a uh, spec'd out MacBook Pro, um, and that's it. I, I use my MacBook Pro for it. Oh my god! And it handled all of that. And Whoa, the so other day, I was opening up. I was opening up another project with another no code tool, and it took like forty seconds just to load the landing page. So this is my point: is when we talk about, they're like, "Why don't you use Squarespace?" I'm like, "Listen, oh, no. Squarespace. I can't even rebuild Squarespace's landing page in Squarespace. What are we talking about? Like, you know, it's like dog I, that's why is a thing. <laughs> yeah, dog fooding is a thing." I mean, that's why I built the, the Squarespace landing page in like six hours in Webflow. I was like, that's why I use Webflow. Like, <laughs> and then someone was like, hey, tell me, Loki, did, did Vlad reach out to you and ask you to do that? <laughs> I was like, hey, I, no. I, I plead the fifth. I can't. <laughs> I doubt. I that's not his style. That. that is not his style. His style, he's very humble. And yeah, um, yeah I wouldn't expect that of him. But uh, yeah, what other uh, things did you learn from the Civilization VI uh, project? Uh, I learned, um, I, I saw a lot of the uh, kind of issues in Webflow. I started seeing issues that uh, you would have on a such a large scale project. And I don't blame the team for not seeing that because I don't think anyone's ever really done a project that kind yeah, of Who's making a video game inside of yes. Webflow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, and that's not to, that's not to, um, you know, uh, that's not a diss at other makers at all. Um, I think it was just like, the, the, there's just no reason to build Civilization VI. I mean, I'm sure if someone came to some, you know, Mackenzie Child or some of the amazing makers out there, yeah. uh, shout out to Mackenzie. Uh, you know, the, they would be able to easily put together a beautiful, amazing project like this. So it's yeah. not a, it's not a matter necessarily of just skill. It's just scope. There's yeah. just so much to handle. And also keep in mind, the hardest part was actually extracting the assets from uh, Civilization VI because there is no UI kit. Yeah. It's not like you just go download all the files and images and then you just, you're good to go. Like I had to actually one by one extract 1,200 assets. And then those 1,200 assets turn into 12,400 individual elements in the project, whether it's buttons or clicks or divs or everything. So all together comes together. And then there's the 400 interactions. Now interactions was the part, the bug that I told you about, yeah. because when you have so many interactions running simultaneously on one page, you start to understand where, where the, you know, where the issues are in the yeah. cracks in the system. Yeah. So one issue I had was, um, this is the perfect example of like how, it's important that Webflow gets pushed around like this from time to time oh, yeah. uh, as a product, uh, because you can really see the cracks in the system. And I was talking to Jorge and a few others in the team and they were like, oh shit, we didn't even know about that. That's insane. Like, yeah. So check this out. You have 46 individual leaders playable in the game. Okay. Like you can, uh, and there's a prototype of the game guys. Uh, some people, it was so realistic. They actually thought it was the actual game. <laughs> I had to go and clarify and say, no, this is just a prototype guys. Calm down. <laughs> um, someone was like, yeah, it's a little slow, but I, I get it. I played the tutorial. I was like, how did you play the tutorial? Like, there is no <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> so, it, so it was actually interesting i was like did webflow just add some additional features i was not aware of <laughs> like into the prototype like yeah. so anyway uh, so I, I was going through it and i realized you have 46 individual leaders which means you have to have 46 individual pages that you player can go yeah. to with 46 individual soundtracks and elements and everything else so really you're dealing with about 10 to 15 assets per leader that needs to be interactive. So you have to do this manually. There is no copy paste. Wow. And that's one of the issues you have. You cannot copy paste interactions from one interaction to another, which would make my life so much easier. The other issue is the real issue is that the naming convention for the classes, right? Yeah. What you want to do is you want to come up with one without getting too nerdy here, but like it's you okay, have the, all nerds. Yeah, <laughs> we are absolutely. Uh, we're pixel geeks. Oh, um, and, uh, congratulations again on the on, on launching the community. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so we have the 46 leaders. And what I did was I came up with one class for it called, let's say, splash screen, yeah. right? That's the loading screen, let's say. Then you have to have an individual subclass and name each one as the individual leaders. Yeah. So my assumption was, 
I could just do that naming convention and into interactions, it would be easy for me to target the yeah. individual classes, yeah. except it yeah. didn't do that, Nelson. What it did was I add the classes and I say, okay, uh, by default, all the splashes are hidden, right? So you yeah. just take the primary parent class yeah. and hide it. And then I'm like, let's target them. So you have 15 individual elements with these subclasses. Yeah. Now I'm using the in, instead of right clicking, like actually going into the navigation panel and yeah. selecting, targeting each one, because you can't see the actual name yeah. of the subclasses. Yeah, That's yeah. a problem. That, right? It's so confusing. Um, but what I have to do now is I have to type it in. <laughs> so I'm using the targeter inside of the interactions now, which is yeah, fine. Yeah. I'm, I assume that that's what I would be doing anyways. Yeah. But when I do it and I target and assign it, when I click on another interaction, it just over, over, uh, um, uh, overrides the next interaction. Yeah. And it just duplicates the one previously. So what I have to do is I have to actually go into the first one, close the interaction, opening it again, and then doing, so basically imagine that 15 times per interaction, times 46 liters, times <laughs> all those elements. <laughs> How long did this project take you from start to finish? About three weeks in my free time when I, was, uh, when I wasn't working on it, anything else. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> and like how many drinks did you have to get over some of the some of the limitations or had to know I, I was fighting of... Yeah, I was fighting really hard to avoid lines of cocaine and heroin and drug. <laughs> I was like let's I, it's like at some point honestly I just wrote to the team and I was like why are you doing this to me? <laughs> like there were no some one, of these bugs. No one told you to make a video game inside of Wednesday. <laughs> But well, actually, it's funny you say that, but the, the, the next thing I'm releasing is a real video game. So that's not a prototype. So it's going to be, it's a match, a match pairs game based on Lord of the Rings. So you oh. saw the one, uh, you saw Joshua Fry, he did the, the, the game in, during the Maker Day challenge with the cards. Yeah, yeah. That's based on my logic that I shared with him. So huh. he did a prototype of that. So that simple logic, gaming logic that yeah. I created using Webflow Interactions was already tested by him. And it already works. So that's actually a hint, hint at the next project that's coming wow. out in November. Wow. Well, I can't wait to see that. Um, yeah. Amazing work with your project, Civilization VI. Uh, congrats on getting notice by Sony, Sid Meier, and his team, and Vlad. Uh, but wow. Wow. So con congrats. Well, let me leave you with a cliffhanger. Okay. Let me leave you with a cliffhanger. So actually, I already spoken to Vlad. Uh, he and uh, I spoke to to Sid and Firaxis. So we're actually doing a special event uh, at the end of the year where Firaxis, Webflow, and me are going to be doing a full full on session interview together to cover how no code and gaming is going to be coming together soon. Yo, <laughs> thank you for carrying that no code flag. And stretching it so far above the mountains. I appreciate it. Well, I mean, the, the main thing here is like, uh, again, a lot of people coming to no code, they need to have a reason for coming to no code. Um, uh, aside from discovering the tools and stuff, but yeah. like, what is your purpose? Where are you trying to take it? I feel like, uh, unlike many other software communities, I feel like no code is, is a family. Like it doesn't yeah. even matter which tool you're using. Everybody it's, it's cross pollinating. You, yeah. you can work. I know people who use bubble and they use Webflow for the front end and they tie it together. Like there's so many interesting things happening that it's not really an either or proposition. And for me throughout my career, you know, the thing that got me really deep in no code is I realized early on, I could use my uh, prototyping skills to actually help big companies actually save thousands, if not millions of dollars. That's where my prototyping kind of forte has come, come together. The, yeah. Unfortunately, the problem is most of my work is on the strict NDAs. So <laughs> it's like, it's, it's kind of the, uh, the ironic side of it. So I realized yeah. that this year early on, just to give you that little bit of context before we go, with the PS4, I saw developers just absolutely hammering no code for no reason. Like just, ah, this is, you know, gimmicks, whatever, landing yeah. pages. I was like, oh, let me build something I know you cannot build. Like, and then the, they, they didn't find out through me. They found out through Vlad's post that, hey, some guy created the PS4. I was like, that was me. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. There you go. So after that, it's like, all right, man, we get it. We get it. Yeah. But I mean, that's not to say I don't want no coders to get cocky, though. You know, like, because I do see people assume that, oh, because I built my landing page in record time, that you no, know, this is a replacement for code or developers. No, <laughs> you know, you and I know very not. well. <laughs> No, it's not. It's to help 
the coders is to help the internet build better things faster and give the coders more time to push it even further to show our engineers hey here are the cracks in the products whether it be webflow bubble or whatever push it forward L help us yeah. lead you and then you lead us and just keep going like that and no coders are helping each other when it comes to connecting different platforms together i mean it's such a fun thing to to build and like uh one of the other semi-finalists said it's like lego bricks and i kept on saying that it's, let's just all have fun and build things together so or or let's make the web beautiful together <laughs> <laughs> i owed you i owed you one um uh, for, for the community um but uh, nelson you've been an inspiration to me uh and many many others uh, i've watched early on especially in the early webflow days your videos helped me get through many weird and interesting challenges so uh, please keep doing that and um it's been a pleasure uh, thanks so much for featuring my work oh my pleasure it's a, I, i'm very honored that uh you su submitted your uh, work to the pixel gate community and that you're you're carrying this flag so high and getting the community noticed by other industries um once you get to the point where uh your you know uh rubbing elbows with ryan reynolds you know because of your <laughs> no code projects uh let us know you know i i'd love to meet him and, and whatnot maybe just chat or whatever but yeah so I think, yeah. This, this is your time to like shout out your links and whatnot uh anything else you want to shout out before i end this recording yeah please uh follow me on twitter uh that's my primary go-to uh, if you want to connect with me um twitter.com slash sarkis vinyasian good luck spelling that um we also you can also find me on webflow uh s-a-r-k-i-s webflow.com slash sarkis if you want to see the civilization rebuild and so on um, but most importantly, uh, what we're working on right now is uh, I'm building one of the first prototyping agencies, companies uh, to kind of connect with the help no coders get introduced to the concepts of MVPing and prototyping, which I think uh, will help them understand Webflow better. And something I'm launching by the end of the year, Nelson, is uh, Maker Streams 2.0. So it's going to be the finally ring in the back. And I'm, 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 I want to finally find a way to take all the top makers like you and Mackenzie and everybody else and bring them all under in one community so that everybody can share their top work more easily. Otherwise we're kind of like restricted to just tweaks or product hunts or something like that. Yeah. And I feel like the community needs that kind of a way, like one person's work should be able to elevate everybody's work. And I think like when I'm, when I'm collaborating with Sid Myers or something like that, you know, I want that to be reflecting and immediately helping elevate the other makers too. But right now it kind of feels like there's this isolated echo chamber in Twitter where it's like, we just tweet it, everyone retweets it, and then we're just forgetting about it. You know, there's so many incredible projects that we never saw this year because it just, they didn't have enough followers or, you know, the, the, the companies didn't notice it or whatever, you know? Yeah. So, you know, for every PS4 you notice, there's at least a hundred other projects that went unnoticed. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I want to make sure I can address that. So uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks so much for, for having me. Awesome. All right. Uh, have a good night or day, whatever. Good day in Thailand, yes. <laughs> yes, all right, see ya. Appreciate you.